Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this cute art wall decor for your home using only markers. So if you're excited for today's project, please make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe because my mom and I create all types of pet lover DIY videos that we would love to share with you. Now without further ado, let's get into it. To start, we're going to be using this as your inspiration. And I'm going to be trying to draw the dog first because that will give us the height of how bent over the human has to be. So we're going to do a body, which is like a little U, and then we have the blockhead. Then we're going to try to draw the silhouette. So the way I usually draw silhouettes is that I'll do the head, then I'll do the arms, and then we'll do the legs. So I have some scrap Bristol paper that I had from another project. And I'm just going to be cutting a five by seven section. Because of the way that original image looks, I think it's going to work best if I do it horizontal. So we're going to start off with the dog, which we said was a U shape. And I'm just leaving the holes here around the, um, the tail and the head area so that I can complete it later. We're just doing the rough draft. Afterwards, we'll check to see if we want to switch up the style of the legs or anything like that. So now we're going to finish the tail. On the image, the dog head is actually a little bit flat. So we'll do it flat. It's like a little box. Because then the person's head is laying on it. Now I am going to be taking some liberties in the style of the human. Um, just because I, I like doing a certain style of silhouette. This doesn't make sense though because the legs are higher than the dog. So I'm going to need to redo this a few times to get it perfect. I always like to show like the messy process that it is to create so I don't edit out a lot of my mistakes and things like that because um, even though I know a lot of people just want to see the easy route I think it's important just to show like the amount of effort and how um, how much you have to try just to try and get something to look the way that it does and if it doesn't just know that like even if I'm only trying this like four or six times I have tried to do so many silhouettes throughout the years that even for me to just get to a point where I'm only doing five or six um, it still took a lot of mistakes so you should never get like discouraged by that you just want to keep playing with the shapes until you feel comfortable like these are all cartoons so like it doesn't need to be super accurate you're not trying to replicate the human anatomy i mean if you are <laughs> that's a whole different um subject <laughs> but for the most part if you're just doing this to decorate your home show some of that dog mom love that you have for your little ones then this should be okay and I actually do like drawing the hands to look like little claws. I don't know why. Um, I think they look cute. Um, I've done that in quite a few of my paintings. Because what I'm hoping to do is that with the markers, we're going to outline everything around it. And then this will be like white space. I'm 
just going to erase all of the inside lines to verify that I actually do like the, the white space that I'm creating. You also want to erase the outside lines because that's where the markers are going to go. So you don't want to end up with those under your marker because then they won't go away. And the human is basically a rectangle then a triangle, a rectangle, a triangle, a rectangle, a triangle, and another rectangle with a little baby rectangle. But we were seeing it with the rounded edges. So that's how I like to do my silhouettes. I actually really like the boxy look of the dog even though my dogs don't, <laughs> neither of them have the square face. So maybe I'll try to make it more triangular. Let's see if, yeah, this is a little bit closer to my puppies. I'm just going to extend the legs. So that they reach the bottom. My babies actually have triangle ears, so I'm going to be switching up the ear for a triangle. We have the puppy tail, which is like mine. They have that long, bushy, brush looking tail. Um, they're both short hairs. I do like this leg the way that it's just a little bit wider so I'm just going to open it up here and now we have our sketch now we're gonna start using the markers to make this all nice and colorful I actually got these markers like years ago at Michael's in the store with one of the coupons so I found them on Amazon and they do still sell them. They just don't seem to be as popular. Um, these are watercolor markers, but you could have the same effect with regular markers too and figure out which colors we're going to be using. Sort of feeling like the, like the greens and the blues might be, a, might be cute. Because the last project I did was purple, which was that cat pumpkin face. I usually like to keep my projects within the same color family so that it's just going to be easier for them to, to adjust. So we'll see if these are still, hopefully they're still wet and they still work properly. But these markers, they're water-based. You can't really use them in water though. So, because they just don't blend as well, but they do look pretty on paper, which is why we're using the Bristol instead of the watercolor. Now that we have our puppy, I'm honestly not really big on doing things at random. So I am a little bit scared of how this is going to turn out. This image kind of reminds me of like going to like a doggy park or being outside and it goes with the colors that I wanted to use. So I'm thinking I'm going to be making heart shapes around here just at random and then we'll fill it in like surrounding it with the different color shades. I think that could possibly look really cute. So that's going to be our plan. So hopefully it turns out really well. I'm going to start off with the blue because then that could be like the sky. And 
and I'm going to be just doing where I want the original hearts to be. So I used the tan tip to make this, or this initial outline and I'm going to be starting to use the wider tip to fill in the space. As you can sort of see, I started filling it in and I think I've maxed out my heart shapes. I don't want to go any further with them. So I'm going to start making some swirls like the Bengal painting <laughs> just to continue filling it in. But first we're going to do the green hearts. So we know exactly how we should do our swirls. So this heart is turning out to not look that cute. <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to add some of that darker green to help define it because I think that's what's making it look sketchy. I don't know if sketchy is the right word. It's just like these two greens are both almost the same so on a positive because we do have the darker markers that i wasn't expecting we will be actually doing like an outline around the borders so that way i don't have to worry so much about the pencil so that is always a good option It just makes things darker so that way this line wouldn't stand out as much and you can do the same thing with your own markers as well now I'm trying to experiment a little bit more now that I'm more comfortable using the markers of just using the, the space differently where I'm not making so many lines at the same time. The good thing about these markers is that because they are water based they take a little bit longer to dry so then I'm able to rush to complete things. you're making this swirls just remember that there's no wrong or right way to go about it you're just trying to fill the space with color and as long as your colors match it's going to look good regardless of what it is that you do mm -hmm. and like i've mentioned in other videos if you're just really struggling Turn your painting upside down so you're only concentrated on colors instead of shapes.
crazy with the bottom right now but it's actually i like the little chaos that i have going on it looks like i have some braids and i like that it's going in different directions so we're just going to continue filling in all of the white space minus the silhouettes <laughs> where you can clearly see all of the marker lines remember you can just go over the other one again to make them match so it doesn't stand out as much so this is more or less how it's turning out so I'm just going to finish completing any of the little white spaces that I see and then we're going to do the outline with the darker markers all around it. When I do filling in the, the little spots that got left behind, I wouldn't worry too much about which color you're using to fill them in because again it's all going to blend together as long as you're using consistent colors that match so because i kept alternating then any fixes that i do with this darker blue are not going to be noticeable along the lighter blue areas so before we go too crazy with everything, I'm going to just erase very lightly all of the pencil marks. Because again, we don't want all of this to be visible once we do the marker. And you want to be careful when you do the ear that you leave enough so that you can see where the ear should be see as we erase there's a whole bunch of places where i didn't do like a perfect line but it's okay remember that you always have your black marker to help you and you can just do that line all along and that's going to help create the perfect shape a line with our darker blue all around the shape as you're doing the outline you want to create certain breaking points for yourself so that you don't have awkward lines in random places so you'll notice like here i choose the crease of the elbow to stop and then we'll do the same with the outer layer. I actually really like the dark blue, especially because I do have these accidental hearts <laughs> over here in the corner, so I think it looks nice. So what I'm going to do to make it darker is that I'm just going to go over it again with the marker to give it that extra um, um, definition that I wanted to have. and made the dog tail way bigger than it was intended to be and I'll try to do to see if I can still salvage some of those skinnier lines is that I'm going to try to only make the curves thicker at the bottom so 
that way it doesn't look as strange. I think the puppy looks okay now. Now I'm just going to try and finish defining this one because you can see like here it's like way lighter than everywhere else so I'm going to just finish trying to even these out just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist but we're almost done put it into a frame and then put it in your favorite place where you like to hang out and just hang it on the wall put it on the table wherever that might be and just enjoy the cuteness of the love you share with your dog and afterwards you can also go ahead and watch this video right here on how to create a beautiful pop art pop print so i'll see you there